Caught you looking for the same thing It's a new thing Check out this I bring Uh oh the rope below the level Cause I'm living low Next to the bay Come on Turn up the radio Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch Welcome today to my first encounter With the brand Pantor. Now this watch specifically the Pantor C line I've been trying to get my hands on one of these for ages. I'm clearly not the first YouTube watch guy to do so. There are a number of other reviews out there already. Most of them positive, some of them gushingly positive. Is it warranted? Does this watch justify its near $400 price tag? Let's flip the camera and find out shall we? So, rolls with a bit of a rep this little Pantor, but let's see today if it's justified or it's all mouth and no trousers. Big thank you to Pantor for sending me this one in for review. They're based in Hong Kong. This green model on the bracelet is available on Amazon for $399. I'll leave a link in the description below. There's a $20 coupon code off that, taking it to $379. There is also a model available on a silicone bracelet for $350. $59 less the code equals 340 and I think the silicone one is the model you should be going for. I'll explain myself as I go along today. Packaging's reasonable. I quite like these little pouchy things. I think they're much better than a bulky box. There's actually some usefulness to them and this one stores two watches. So if you're going away for the weekend, you can always pack a second dressier piece to go along with your Pantor. Now I'm recommending the silicone one in spite of the fact that the bracelet does actually come with the silicone as well. Gives me a good opportunity to put it on there today. It also comes with this slightly frightening looking uh, spring bar remover. I'm not sure I'd be taking that to my watch but nice of them to include it in the package nonetheless. So this Pantor is another one of these cushion case dive watches that just disappears once you get it on the wrist. 42 millimeters in diameter, 22 mil lug width. So fairly chunky initial impressions. However, 45 millimeter lug to lug, 13 mil thick, pretty good for a Seiko NH35 movement in it. So wears much, much smaller once you have it on your wrist. 22 mil lugs as mentioned, 22, 22, no taper on the metal bracelet. Sized for my seven inch wrist on the bracelet, this one comes in at just over 175 grams. So certainly a little bit of heft to it due to its all stainless steel construction. So the usual 316L stainless steel on the case, bezel, on the crown and on the bracelet. Now solid links, just push pins. They were relatively easy for me to size. But as you can see there, we don't have fitted end links. We've just got straight end links on the bracelet, which, you know, I guess it's in keeping with this 1970s style, but I suspect they just bought this bracelet straight off the shelf. Now Pantor, very, very simple uh, etching there on the clasp, but wait for it. Ah, oh, press clasp for 399 unacceptable. That's why I wouldn't be bothering with this bracelet at all. I'd just be going for it on the silicone strap. Ah, that's better. Now it is a very nice, very comfortable, flexible, compliant silicone strap. Nicely grooved there as well, so the buckle sits nicely when it's on the wrist. But it is silicone, it's gonna fluff up terribly, so do bear that in mind. You're gonna have to keep this one clean. You're gonna have to maintain the strap a little bit, but nice Pantor etching on a brushed buckle there, pretty good. Screw down case back there with the little sea lion on there, very nice indeed. 300 meters, 990 feet of water resistance, sapphire crystal, and all stainless steel construction. And interestingly, this one has got a helium escape valve on the side at the nine o'clock. Perhaps you can tell me, helium escape valves, I consider them a bit of a fashion item. I've seen 300 meter watches before though without a helium escape valve. I've only really seen these on 1000 meter watches before. Is there a cutoff point where one of these becomes useful and valid or is it just an affectation? Answers on a postcard, please. As mentioned, the movement behind the case pack today is the Seiko NH35, hardly needs an introduction, 24 dual hacks and hand winds, 21,600 vibrations per hour, and a pretty decent one this, running for a couple of weeks, mostly in my wolf winders, but a little bit of wrist time as well, coming in at just under minus six, as you can see there. So another decent result from the venerable Seiko. 
and zoomed right in on what is a fairly simple but quite attractive dial. Just printed some nice big indices, plenty of loom. I'll pop up a loom shot now actually. Plenty of loom as mentioned. Stronger on the hands and the loom pit than on the dial itself but gobfuls of it. Perhaps not quite Seiko standard but not really too far off given that this Pantor is in many ways trying to out Seiko Seiko. Nice attractive handset actually with a scallop in the middle, no frame around the date window, minimal printing on the dial, they've kept it pretty clean. Aluminium bezel insert, now it's a 120 click unidirectional bezel which is rock solid, no back play on that one whatsoever and it's a really nice grippy bezel as well, very nice piece of machining. The crown, again screw down as you'd expect for 300 meters, another little nice touch there, the sea lion on the crown, plenty of, plenty of grip there as well, but this is definitely a dive watch you could actually dive with, which is just as well really, isn't it? And there it is on my seven inch wrist. As I said, 42, but it kind of vanishes because of the cushion case. Very, very comfy on that silicone strap. Looks purposeful, looks chunky, but not too chunky. Perhaps then a viable alternative to the Seiko Mini Turtle. This one obviously having sapphire crystal with AR coating on the underside, something sorely lacking in Seiko's base models. Moans and niggles then, well I've already had a decent gripe about the bracelet, not really up to snuff for 400 I must say. Now this loom pip here, it works as you saw from the loom shot, but it's clearly a different colour than the rest of the watch. Not sure if that's intentional, I spoke to Pantor and they said if it loomed, if it glowed, it was fine, so I'll take their word for it. And I guess my only other big question mark about this watch is the value equation. Even on the silicone strap, you're well over $300. I've seen plenty of other pieces nicely manufactured, nicely made featuring this Seiko NH35. There's only a printed dial here after all. There's nothing that makes this Pantor stand out in comparison to the competition. But if you like the look, if you like this cushion style case and you don't want a 6105 homage, certainly worth considering the Pantor Sea Lion. So there you have it, something of a split decision then with the Pantor Sea Lion. Wears beautifully and it's a nicely machined little piece, but that bracelet should have solid end links, should have a mill clasp, certainly at that price point. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description below. Certainly worth considering on the rubber strap. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.